Hey everyone, welcome back to another monthly meal prep. I'm really excited about this week's video. I have a lot of fantastic recipes to share with you. Also, this week's video is sponsored by Allform. I'll be sharing a little bit more about that later on in the video. So I am focusing on a lot of healthy meals this month. I wanted a handful of meals to throw in the freezer to use throughout the month as I usually do. I like to mix it in with freshly prepared meals just for really busy days and just to lighten my load whenever I can take a few hours out of the month like this to just get everything prepared. So the first thing that I'm going to be making is a Caesar spaghetti squash casserole. This is really simple. If you've never made a spaghetti squash, I highly recommend trying it out this month. It's very, very easy. You just cut it in half. You scoop out the seeds and you throw it in the oven. I will have the instructions written in the description box below as well as the other recipes. So for this recipe, you're going to use some fire roasted tomatoes and I'm using this little can strainer just to kind of rinse the tomatoes because I did not want the tomato juice in the casserole. I just wanted the diced tomatoes. All right, to make up the sauce and the protein to go in this casserole, I'm going to be using some of my canned chicken breast. It might look a little funny because I already took one breast out of here to make myself some chicken salad yesterday. So I'm thinking I'll probably have about two cups shredded once I get this out of here. That's one thing I love about having canned meat on the shelf whenever it's home canned. It doesn't taste weird, but it's so convenient. I'm gonna do four tablespoons of melted butter. I've got my diced tomatoes back here. I'm going to use this Caesar dressing from Primal Kitchen. It is a really healthy Caesar dressing. Um, it's made with avocado oil, and I've got some fresh parsley, some fresh garlic here, and then I wanted to make a little note about this with trying to switch to more sustainable things. I've been using this beeswax wrap and it comes in a big pack where there's different shapes and sizes and you can use them for literally anything. So I have my Parmesan cheese in here and I will be opening this up and shredding it to pop it in here. This recipe is really simple. You basically just wanna combine everything and then I did take the butter and put it in this little pitcher to melt down to be able to stir in with the sauce. And I've actually never really used a Caesar dressing in something like this, but wow, it is so delicious and I will definitely be making this recipe again. It was a huge hit with my family and they all really enjoyed it. I have been getting a lot of requests to show you all how I do my home canned meats, so I will be sharing that soon. However, I don't use a pressure cooker. I use the traditional methods that my grandmothers have used for years, and I know not everybody prefers to do it that way, but I've had enough requests on how I do it that I think I'll be sharing with you soon. So this recipe takes about two cups of diced chicken, and then the rest of it I put into a bowl for another recipe that I'll be sharing in this video. Now Next, you're going to want to mince up about two cloves of garlic. These garlic cloves were huge, so I actually ended up cutting them down a little bit to fit into my garlic press. All right, so now you're going to shred up some Parmesan cheese, and I just basically eyeball this. I'm not exactly sure how much went in this. Something makes me think it was about a half cup, but again, I will make sure I have the exact measurements written in the description box. Once I had all of my like sauce ingredients, basically everything but the spaghetti squash, I really mixed it up well before I started to add in the spaghetti squash. Like I said, Allform is this week's sponsor, and Allform is obsessed with providing a high-quality modular sofa design for real life. Each Allform sofa features a sleek, modern aesthetic and is made using high-quality material design to be comfy and durable. Their fabrics are all heavy-duty, scratch, pill, and stain-resistant without sacrificing a comfortable feel. 
Since I work from home and we also homeschool, our living space gets used so much. So having a high quality sofa is extremely important to us and being able to trust that it will hold up for years to come. I was very happy with how everything feels with this couch. It's so comfortable, perfect for movie nights and all of our family activities. This furniture was so simple to put together. It's completely tool free, which is awesome there's no hassle you can put it together and move it very very easily my brother and I were able to put this together so quickly and it's so versatile they have a lot of different shapes and sizes whatever fits your space they have chairs they have love seats the options are truly endless and will work for any style home there is a huge color selection, which I thought was really neat. And you can also select the color you want of the legs, which I think works well to match different floorings and other furnishings you may already have in your home. As a mom and a pet owner, another feature that I appreciate a lot is the covers on the back cushions and the seat cushions are removable. So if you have a mess that you need to clean up, it's simple to accomplish. They have a promise of a 100 day relaxation trial and 100% free fast delivery. I love my all form sofa and I think you would too. If you're looking for some new seating, check out all form, visit the link below or go to allform.com slash Adeline for 20% off the sofa of your choice. And now we're back to cooking. So I wanted to share with you these pans I found on Amazon. As I'm trying to be a little bit more sustainable, I wanted to get away from those disposable foil pans and I found these. They're awesome, they come in packs of four, so I actually ordered eight for myself for now. And I have been actually cooking in these as well. I feel like the non-stick part of them is really handy. They clean up really, really nice and they're a great size. Plus, as I'll talk a little bit more about later on in the video, they stack really well since each one of them comes with a lid. So now that my spaghetti squash was done in the oven, you just take a fork and they are pretty hot so you may want a hot pad or a towel to kind of steady them as you're digging the flesh out of the inside of the squash. Once you have it all mixed together, you're gonna just go ahead and lay it out in your pan. And then I topped mine with a little bit more Parmesan cheese and a little bit of chopped up parsley. Okay, the next freezer dish that we are going to prepare is a tuna casserole. If you all grew up eating this, this is a really healthy spin on a tuna casserole and really delicious. Also, I have to make a side note, I did use my small spiralizer, but this is the same day I ordered a hand crank one. So probably in one of the next videos you see, I will be using one that has a hand crank they're very nice, very inexpensive, and if you are somebody that eats a lot of healthy dishes, whether they're gluten-free, dairy-free, whether they are keto, whatnot, and you're going to be spiralizing a lot of veggies, investing in a good hand crank spiralizer is definitely helpful. Okay, so this is going to look like a ton of squash because it is six yellow squash and it piles up really high. I actually put my lid for my skillet right on top of it even though it was piled up a couple inches and you just wanna let it cook down. You'll see here in a moment, it really cooks down far and it gives you a nice amount of spiralized squash but you will have to start with a big pile because it does cook down far. And then another thing that I think is helpful with this is to use tongs to kind of separate your noodles or zoodles out so that they aren't all stuck together. Next, you're going to dump your zoodles into a strainer and just let them hang over the sink or set in the sink while you're preparing the rest of the sauce. You want them to drip and you really want that moisture to kind of exit so that your casserole doesn't end up all soupy or runny. 
Now for the sauce, this sauce, oh my goodness, so, so yummy, so savory, so comforting, so delicious. You wanna start out with a bell pepper. I chose a yellow one. I just thought it would give a nice sweet flavor, especially along with a fish-like tuna. And I diced that up and put it into the frying pan with some onion. And you just wanna get all of that cooked up together. And the oil that I'm using throughout this video is an avocado oil. It's our favorite oil, plus it's very healthy for you and it has a very minimal flavor. You'll add some other ingredients, like some minced garlic, and then I'm using some chicken bone broth here to just get your sauce rolling. And the flavor out of this, the smell in my kitchen was so delicious. I am using some heavy cream to um, whip this up, but you could also use coconut cream as a dairy-free option. As usual, I try to give you lots of different ideas if you're gluten-free or dairy-free or keto, or if you're just wanting to eat a little healthier, I like to give you all of those ideas. So you're gonna go ahead and put some pork rinds and a little bit of the Parmesan cheese and just a little bit of oil into a food processor. You can also use pre-made breadcrumbs if you're not going for something that is gluten-free or keto but I just wanted to go ahead and make this gluten free. So I did use the pork rinds instead of the breadcrumbs. Exanthin gum is something I think everyone should have in their kitchen. It's a great healthier option to cornstarch just to get stuff a little bit more thickened up. So I put a little bit of that in. You're gonna see me use that later on in this video again. And then you just wanna grab about three cans of tuna in water. And this is just a good way to use up canned tuna, especially if you've had it hanging around in your pantry for a while and you haven't used it for anything else. Again, I am putting a little bit of uh, avocado oil in one of these pans. And again, I'm using some tongs just to kind of get the zoodles put over into the pan. So you wanna put the zoodles in first, and then you're gonna go ahead and put your tuna um, sauce on top of that. After that, you will top it with your breadcrumbs or your pork rind mixture, whatever you decided to go with. And then I did garnish it with a little bit of chopped parsley. Now I'm gonna go ahead and make some mashed cauliflower to make some cottage pie. Yes, I said cottage pie. The last time I made this, um, I called it shepherd's pie, but I was using ground beef, and a lot of you said it's not shepherd's pie unless you use ground lamb. So I guess it's called cottage pie if you're using only ground beef. So I'm making some cottage pie, but instead of mashed potatoes, I'm gonna go ahead and use some mashed cauliflower. One thing I love about making mashed cauliflower in a pressure cooker is that the cauliflower doesn't get as full of liquid, so it makes for a nicer mashed cauliflower. So next I'm going to go ahead and cut up a red bell pepper, just dice it up nice. We're going to make our meat sauce kind of um, part of the bottom of the cottage pie. So you're going to want an onion and you'll just dice that up as well. Okay, so I did a little bit of a cheat here, but I'm using some of my home canned carrots for this. So I did not add these into the sauce, but if you were going to use a raw carrot, you would want to cook it up with the other veggies. But I'll be adding the carrot in here after the sauce is made up. I did use one pound of ground beef. I kind of wish I would have used two in this, but it's okay. We'll just make one meal out of it and not have any leftovers. So once that's browned up and your veggies are cooked through, you're gonna start adding your other things for your sauce. So I used a beef bone broth just to give it a nice deep flavor, some Worcestershire sauce. <laughs> and I think I nailed it there, you guys. I always make um, a kind of a joke out of how to say that because it's, it's a tongue twister. And then you're gonna add in some tomato paste. You could use a little bit of tomato sauce. It's just gonna take longer to cook down and really make a nice sauce. I also sprinkled in some Italian seasoning. So after you have all of your ingredients in for your sauce, you're just gonna let that cook until it starts to thicken. Next, my cauliflower was done and I just dumped off the chicken broth or beef broth that I dumped over it just to get the moisture out. And then I used my immersion blender and just quickly chopped it up. I added in some butter and some sour cream and then a little bit of the buttery steakhouse seasoning that I love to use on all veggies. It's my favorite. If I can find a link for this on Amazon, I will. Because once you guys use this, you won't wanna use anything else on your veggies. At this point, my sauce was pretty much cooked down and I went ahead and put it in the bottom of my pan. Since it was a beef 
kind of situation. I didn't feel the need to grease the bottom of the pan. Then I went ahead and sprinkled my cooked carrots in on top of that since they were already cooked and ready to go. And of course, after that, you want to put your mashed cauliflower or mashed potatoes right on top of your meat. And there you have your cottage pie. Okay, so now we are going to make a chicken zoodle soup. I'm on the roll with making stuff with zoodles, which is zucchini noodles, if you didn't know. So the first thing I did was cook up some diced onion in the bottom of the pan. Once they were cooked through, I used a little bit of oil in there. I added in my broth and this turned out so delicious. And I did do a dairy-free option with this. Again, I used some of my canned chicken, which was so handy, it was already made up. I really just had to kind of dump this recipe together and let it simmer on the stove. So once I had that cut up, I also cut up some of my canned carrots and I added in some frozen peas. And then I went and made my zucchini noodles. So I made this dairy free by using a can of the regular cream coconut milk. And you could use heavy cream in this. You could use half and half in this if you want to. We're kind of making a creamy chicken noodle soup with this. And it just turned out so yummy. I can't wait to make like paninis or grilled cheese something like that to go along with this for a good healthy lunch and my kids will get be getting a lot of vegetables in this way and they really enjoy soups like this as well. All right, well that was simmering on the stove. I got started into some sesame chicken and you can use whatever cut of chicken you wanna use for this. I know chicken has been pretty pricey these days and I actually found a great deal at a local discount store on some chicken tenders. So that is what I'm using, but you could use chicken thighs. Those are often a lot cheaper than chicken breasts. Whatever works for your budget and you just want to go ahead and cook those up. You wanna cut them into small pieces, whatever cut of chicken you're using, just bite-sized pieces. So I fried them up in a little bit of avocado oil. Once they were cooked, I went ahead and started my sesame sauce. So I'm using some liquid aminos. Remember, liquid aminos are just a healthier version of soy sauce. So you can use that or you can use soy sauce, one or the other, whatever you have on hand. And then I did use an alternative sweetener. However, you could go ahead and use regular sugar. You could also use honey in this. Um, you just can use whatever you want to make it a nice sweet flavor that goes great with that sesame oil. Speaking of sesame oil, I used a toasted sesame oil. That just brings out the sesame flavor all the more when it's toasted. And then I used some already squeezed lime juice. After that, I cut up some green onions and you want both the green ends and the white ends for this recipe. Once the sauce has thickened up a little bit, you can dump your chicken pieces in there and that is all it takes for this. Other than right at the end, you'll see me sprinkling some sesame seeds over the top. But to go along with this and to fill up my pan, I wanted to make up some fried cauliflower rice. So I just dumped a bag of the frozen cauliflower rice into the pan. I put the white ends of my green onions in there in the middle just to get them softened up and fried up well. And then you'll be mixing them in. This is just kind of a recipe I threw together offhand. It's nothing that I have written down. And usually when I make fried cauliflower rice or fried rice, I'm kind of just throwing different things into the pan. I need an egg, you know, you want some ginger in there, a little bit of soy sauce or liquid aminos. Just kind of give it all the Asian flavorings that you have around. And then to top off the cauliflower rice, I did put in the green ends of the green onions. The next recipe we are making is extremely simple and I wanted to say right off the bat that you do not need to make this in a pressure cooker. It's just gonna speed up my time a little bit, but you can definitely make this in a large frying pan. You're going to be creating some pot sticker bowls and this is about four to five cups of shredded cabbage. 
You can shred it as thin or as thick as you like. You want some liquid aminos, some chicken broth, some rice vinegar, salt, black sesame seeds, red crushed pepper, and about a half cup of green onions, the white, more of the white part of it, and then you want some of the greener part of the green onions just for topping. This is about a half teaspoon of grated ginger, and then two garlic cloves minced. I have a half cup of finely cut red pepper, two eggs, we're gonna need some lime juice, about two tablespoons of that, and then you will want one to two pounds of ground pork. Now this is my home canned ground uh, pork. I have sausage on here, but it's just ground pork. And I think this is going to be about a, a pound and a half. These usually hold a little less than a pound, so I decided to go ahead and throw two jars of this in here. Now, if you are making this with regular pork, it does not need to be cooked. This is just already cooked because it's in the can, but you can definitely just make it from fresh ground pork. This recipe is pretty much a dump together recipe. One thing I love about having canned meat, especially for home canned sausage and home canned beef, is you can actually scrape off the fat off the top of the jar if you don't want as much fat in the recipe, which this one I didn't want as much fat, so I actually just scraped off the top of it. I gave some of it to our dog, she loved it. <laughs> so that's one nice thing about having ground meats canned is you can kind of adjust the fat content a little bit better by being able to skim off the top. Next, I did some limes. This recipe is so yummy. I did regret, I did after a while put a little bit of exanthin gum in this and I wish I would have just let it cook down and kind of thicken on its own instead of trying to add the exanthin gum. I felt like it added a little bit too much thickness to it, but that's okay. It'll still be delicious the next time I make it. I just won't make it with the added exanthin gum. So while that was cooking up in the pressure cooker, I decided to prep a little bit of fruit for this week. I know this is a monthly prep and I usually do this kind of thing in my weekly preps, but I just needed some fruit and our two fruits that we picked for the week. I did some cantaloupe and some strawberries and these strawberries are really big. And as you saw, I was putting them into that salad spinner. I just got that thing and it's so nice for prepping fruits and veggies and produce. So I just soaked it in the salad spinner with a little bit of white vinegar. And then after I let them sit for a while, I dumped the water out and put the inside basket back inside and then just spun the water off of the berries. Okay, so I've been trying to drink a little bit more lemon water and something that helps me do that and stay consistent with it is to have some lemons chopped up in the refrigerator. So I just popped them into this little jar with the lid and I'll leave a link for these white lids because I do get questions about them pretty often. They fit on any large mouth mason jar and they're really convenient for storing things in the refrigerator. Okay, so here's where I made my mistake. I was putting a little bit of exanthin gum in here. Although I will say the flavor of this dish was so yummy and it'll be a great either lunch option or else a dinner option. I could make homemade egg rolls, which I did a few videos back. So if you guys wanna see how to make egg rolls at home and make them really yummy, you can go check that out. But it's just a nice, quick, easy Asian dish. I've been trying to be a little bit more conscious of my garnishes. I feel like garnishing things just make them look so much more flavorful and also makes it a lot more fun to cook. So I did garnish the top of this with some green onion and then I just chopped up a few of the limes that I had. I'm absolutely thrilled with everything I got prepped today. All Everything is here except for the spaghetti squash casserole that I had done. We are doing that for dinner. But I went ahead and put the chicken zoodle soup into these. And I will just freeze these this way. I may actually need to take a little bit out of the top just to give myself some space to freeze because I think these are gonna be a better like lunch type food. So we probably will only want one quart at a time. And then down here I have these and then 
and I wanted to make a little note about using these. I'm so excited to have these now because I can stack them so nicely in my freezer and versus the disposable pans where they're always like smashing and like if you've worked with them before and you've done freezer meals in them, you know how they can kind of be difficult to work with. But because these have these lids, it just makes it really easy to be able to um, stack it and not have to worry about stuff getting smashed inside. I did put a layer of the press and seal in between. I'm going to see how that goes. I'll keep you updated on what I put between. I definitely don't think this is airtight enough to just have the lid like this. This one doesn't have the press and seal. I need to put it in there yet. Um, and I may have to switch to putting a piece of tin foil between. Thank you guys for watching today. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe. I hope this video left you feeling inspired. Leave me a comment below. That always helps my channel out. Don't forget to check out the links in the description box along with the recipes and where you can find other things that are shown in this video. And I'll see you guys in my next video.